safety. Lisa Spencer from the Indiana County Department of Human Services is with us this morning. Conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Lisa, did I phrase that correctly? I've got $5 million in my pocket, and if I don't spend it, I lose it. So here. That is exactly true. Good morning. (laughs) Yeah. So this is a big program, and what we have to do is we have over $5.5 million, and we have to spend 65% of that, which is just under $3.6 million, uh, by July 31st, or the state will take that back Mm -hmm. and reallocate it to other counties. Okay, so so that frames the discussion. Uh, this money is available here for and for specific purposes, and, and that might be the problem for us, is that there's a very specific way in which these funds can be used and only in that way. A- absolutely. So let's just go over the eligibility first because we want to make sure that everybody who, we just don't want anybody thinking, oh, maybe that's not for me. I want everybody to think possibly this could be for them. If you are on unemployment, then you need to be calling ICAP because if you're behind in your rent or utilities, uh, then we might be, ICAP might be able to help you get you current on those bills if you are on unemployment at this time. There are some financial guidelines that come along with this program, but, um, you know, we still want people to come and try. And then the other thing that could qualify somebody is if they can show that they've had a reduction in their household income, mm-hmm. they incurred significant costs, or experienced other financial hardship due directly or indirectly to COVID-19. So anyone who has a past due utility or a rent notice or eviction notice or any kind of evidence that shows that you know COVID-19 has put undue um, financial stress on them, Mm -hmm. that we also want you to call ICAP. So we want to get this message out across Indiana County, and ICAP will be getting a few more people on board next week to help with the phones. So we just want to make sure everybody gets this information out, that if even if you're not sure whether or not you qualify, please call and just run down through um, a questionnaire with them just to see if you can. Yeah. Okay. One of the questions that somebody asked me to ask you was, I'm a homeowner, and uh, so I, I maybe the rent isn't something that is available to me, but can I get utility assistance? Not with this money, but how, however, the, next stimu- the stimulus that was just signed this week, that is going to come down with some um, information for the homeowners. Mm-hmm. That's it's supposed to be in there. I didn't actually. It was in there when I saw the Senate bill. So when they actually passed it through the House again, I'm assuming that that stayed in there. And so the homeowner should be getting some relief coming in this next bill, mm-hmm. along with more rental assistance. So it's a lot of money. Yeah. And um, but we really want to help as many people as possible in Indiana County. So we have thrown this outreach into overdrive through electronic, you know, different outlets, through radio, through newspapers, through, I I mean, there was an article yesterday in the Indiana Gazette that was really um, great. Chauncey Ross did a great job summarizing all of that. So we really just need people to, um, you know, get the word out. We're sending out hard copies to all the churches today, um, to municipalities and borough managers and police departments and fire departments, just to try to get the word out as completely as we can. So we talked with you about this last week uh, when you sort of framed the argument for us. And uh, and in this week since that time, uh, obviously you've had more outreach and and more opportunities. So what has been the response? Have you heard uh, from people that said, okay, we have a group of people over here or a church group uh, that is involved in, in helping people with their rent? Have you heard those sorts of things? Uh, well, it wouldn't probably. I wouldn't probably get to hear that because I kept um, implementing the program. Mm-hmm. But I know that uh, Vicky had Vicky Allen had sent to me yesterday from ICAP. They've had twelve applications turned in so far. They've completed one of them, and they were able to approve um, some rent for that application. Uh, but we really want to now that this big push is on. We really want people to understand that this is an opportunity to help them and to also help the landlords. So the landlords can apply on behalf of the tenant, but they do have to get the tenant's signature. Okay. All right. So that's that's an important thing there. So for the landlords themselves, 
um, the the assistance isn't directly available to them, but their tenants can get the assistance, and so the landlords just need to step in there. Absolutely. And I want to just um, give you a couple scenarios just because some maybe people aren't quite thinking outside the box here a little. So if you were at home and you had um, your children at home and then you had to go back to work and then you had to send your kids to daycare, that's an unexpected um, cost due to COVID-19 because the schools were, um, you know, doing uh, virtual distance learning. Yeah. And so when your money gets transferred over to the child care center, then you can't pay, you know, pay your rent or utilities. That's kind of a scenario where we think we can help. Um, so if you're behind on rent and utilities for something in that scenario, or if you can prove that, like the cost of your electricity or whatever has gone, you know, really high just because you had everybody at home during that time Mm -hmm. and you got behind on your rent and utilities, then we might be able to help you. Again, there are income guidelines. The maximum you can do is 80% of the average median income. But you won't know what those are until you call and get those because that's not usually out there. Although I did send to Chauncey, I will send to you as well, Todd, uh, a chart of what the average median income is from one to eight people for the 30 percent, 50 percent, and 80 percent of the AMI. Okay. If that if that would be helpful. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, all that information is indeed helpful, and and it's good that you uh, that you put it the way that you did with that uh, scenario that you just outlined for us, because now that gets people uh, in their minds thinking, okay, well. This might be something that would apply in my case, even though it's not directly what Lisa was talking about. I can see how um, it could turn in my favor in, in that way. And so the, the point is that right now uh, there are people that are going to be able to help them to figure all of that out, and they just need to get in touch. Absolutely. I mean, I would rather everybody try to go through the process and see if they could qualify than sit at home and not not even try. If you don't try, we can't help at all. But if you make that effort, then we might be able to work down through these guidelines or ICAP will work down through the I, I, um, the uh, eligibility criteria and they might be able to approve that. So like, it's not just about whether or not you're unemployed. There's other things that could qualify. That's why we're encouraging everybody to call. If you were on even like a fixed income that might meet the qualified um, different income guidelines, but you can show that you've had financial issues in different areas, then call. So that's my biggest message today. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, again, give us the number that folks should call if they have questions about this and they want to get involved. Okay. Absolutely call ICAP at 724-465-2657. I'll do it one more time, 724-465-2657. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they will, they will be able to help you down through. They have like a preliminary list of questions that they'll be able to ask to kind of see if they can get people qualified. They are ready to go. ICAP is ready, and they're getting more help on board. They're hiring um, up to four more um, people to take incoming calls and an extra fiscal person. So they're ready for this and we're ready to help Indiana County. So I'm going to stay on with you for the next couple Fridays and uh, give you an update as to how we're doing at this same time frame. And we're hoping that we have good news for you next Friday. Lisa, other counties, are they in the same boat as Indiana County is? Yes, they absolutely are. But um, they actually, depending on the size of the County, they, you know, obviously they'll have, way more money if they're a larger county, but mm-hmm. some of the larger counties ended up getting um, an allotment straight from the Treasury Department and also some of this money that came down through the state, and they have two different kinds of um, guidelines and different regulations on them, so that's a little trickier for those very large counties, but we do not have the instruction and um, requirements have not been completed yet for what we, you know, all the definitive answers to all of these questions about how we can run this program. So that's, hopefully that's coming soon, but we're going to go off of the draft and do the best we can until we receive that from the state. Yeah, that's the interesting thing is, well, there are many interesting aspects of this, but um, the state hasn't exactly been forthcoming with guidance. And so 
they're leaving you and and others like you in other counties uh, with the task of, um, of interpreting and then putting together a program and in the end they might come back and say well you can't quite do it that way or this way but you just have to do the best you can with the information you have that's all you can do and then if they change something on us we'll just change with it and do the best we can but I don't want to stop the process ICAP's been open since Monday and we really want people to start um, accessing this program to see how we can help. That's the bottom line. We have the money. If you qualify, we absolutely want to help. Got to make those calls. Lisa, can you hang on to the line for just a moment? I need to talk with you. Sure. All right. She's Lisa Spencer. All right. She-